Every day, millions of Americans buy gas. Customers and service station owners want to be certain what is paid for is what is dispensed, and vice versa. That certainty derives from the precision of the gas pump and the efforts of weights and measures officials who inspect these dispensers to ensure they are operating at the high levels of reliability and efficiency for which they were designed. This video will demonstrate proper procedures developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, for testing the accuracy of retail motor fuel dispensers and for ensuring compliance with NIST Handbook 44, which helps guarantee consistent, clear, and understandable transactions. Accuracy and transparency are what the public and gas station owners expect from the devices that dispense the gasoline they buy and sell. In the next few minutes, this dispenser will be inspected and tested for compliance with the provisions of NIST Handbook 44. Before beginning an accuracy test, the inspector examines the dispenser to verify compliance with specifications in NIST Handbook 44. To verify that a dispenser is measuring accurately, the inspector uses a specialized container or standard whose capacity has been verified in a NIST authorized laboratory. Depending on their capacities and other design features, these are called test measures or provers. They must comply with NIST Handbook 105-3 to be acceptable as a field standard. To the extent possible, an inspector tries to duplicate the conditions under which a customer will use the, the device. So with a gasoline dispenser, if you think about the meter that's being used in the dispenser, meters can vary in accuracy according to the rate of flow. They can perform differently at slower rates than they can at fast rates. If you think about the way a delivery occurs, a customer will start pumping at a slower rate, get up to some steady state, and then at the end of the delivery will start to slow down until the delivery is finished. If the test draft is small, the portions of the delivery at the beginning and the end become very large. So it's important that the test draft size be adequately large so that the bulk of the delivery, as, as done by the inspector, will represent the normal steady state of that device. So for most gasoline dispensers, a 19 liter or five gallon test draft is considered adequate. If the inspector is testing a larger meter, such as used as truck stops, the meter um, will be operating in a much larger flow rate, so the inspector will need a larger test draft size. In those cases, it's recommended that the test draft size hold at least one minute's worth of flow. Having selected the appropriate standard, the inspector makes sure the device is ready for use by looking inside for dirt or other foreign materials that might affect the reading. Also, the security seals on the gauge plates must be checked to be sure they are intact. If the seals are broken, the test measure or prover must be returned to a NIST-approved lab for re-verification before it can be used in an official testing. When the test measure or prover is filled with liquid and then emptied, a small amount of residual product remains inside. Because it is impractical to dry the inside of test measures or provers between uses, they are generally calibrated to deliver rather than to contain. A dry test measure or prover must be wet down prior to the first use of the day or between extended period of non-use to duplicate the laboratory procedure during its calibration. The wet-down procedure consists of filling the test measure or prover to capacity and following the prescribed pour and drain protocol. The inspector zeroes the dispenser and begins pumping gas into the test measure with the handle fully depressed, just as a consumer typically would. That is, at the maximum flow rate the dispenser can reach in this installation. While the test draft is being taken, pay special attention to the fact that the dispenser's nozzle is touching the neck of the prover or test measure to ensure proper grounding. Trailer mounted units must also be grounded to the dispenser. 
The product is dispensed into the test measure or the prover until the pump's indicator reads exactly five gallons. For a device indicating in liters, a test measure or prover designed to show errors in milliliters is used, and test drafts of 19 liters or larger are used. This is a normal test, but there is another kind of test needed to verify dispenser accuracy. A special or slow flow test is conducted at a slower flow rate. The reason that an inspector will conduct a slow flow test is to really look at the condition of a meter. Meters operate at different uh, levels of performance depending upon how fast or slow they are operating. So a meter that's operating in a slower flow rate can perform differently than a meter that's operating in a fast flow rate. So the key purpose of doing a slow flow test is to look at the condition of the meter. The slow flow test is conducted at 19 liters or 5 gallons a minute with the nozzle set at its lowest clip or the minimum flow rate marked on the meter, whichever is less. In many jurisdictions, trailer mounted standards, called provers, are used instead of handheld test measure. For either, the process of taking a test draft is virtually identical. After filling a test measure or prover to capacity, it must be leveled. A test measure is placed on a level surface to ensure an accurate reading, one that, near as possible, duplicates laboratory conditions and is not thrown off by tilting. Level is determined by placing a spirit level vertically against the measure's neck on at least two locations at least 90 degrees apart around the circumference of the neck and adjusting the orientation of the standard until the neck is as close to vertical as possible. This is called plumbing the neck. Leveling a trailer mounted prover is slightly different. A trailer mounted five gallon prover is generally mounted to the test unit with a flexible joint assembly. To level a trailer mounted prover, an inspector grasps the prover and gently moves it back and forth or side to side until the prover is level according to the level indicator mounted on the prover. Final leveling of a test measure or prover should be done at the end of a test draft when the test measure or prover is full of liquid. This is because the weight of the liquid can affect the level condition. Now, with the product drawn and the test measure or prover level, it's time to read the meniscus which is found at the top of the liquid in the sight glass of the test measure or prover. Most likely, it will be slightly concave. Having taken a position at which the bottom of the meniscus is at eye level, the inspector reads the error at the bottom of the concave-shaped meniscus. If the bottom of the meniscus is not exactly at zero, the value will be read as a minus error if it is below the zero line or as plus error if it is above. When the reading is between gauge graduations, it is always rounded off to the nearest graduation. If the bottom of the meniscus is exactly in the middle of a graduated interval, the value of the nearest even numbered graduation is read. In this example, the reading would be plus two cubic inches because the bottom of the meniscus is midway between plus one and plus two and the lower value is an odd number. After determining the error for a test draft, the inspector will compare that error with the, the allowable tolerance that's being applied to the piece of equipment being tested. If the result is at the tolerance limit, if it's near the tolerance limit, or even if it exceeds the tolerance limit, it's recommended that the inspector repeat that draft. The primary purpose of repeating that draft is to verify that the initial result actually reflects the performance of the device and isn't due to any error or procedural uh, uh, variation that might have occurred on the part of the inspector. Emptying a test measure or prover is more than just pouring product back into a storage tank. When filled with liquid and then emptied, a small amount of residual product will cling to the inside of the test measure or prover. This can affect the measurement. So after each test, a specific draining procedure must be followed to ensure that the amount of liquid remaining is consistent. For a handheld measure, place the neck of the test measure against a metal funnel to ground it. 
Never use a plastic funnel or substitute a plastic safety cone. These can allow a buildup of a static charge when product is poured. Now, pour the content slowly enough that the main flow stops after 30 seconds, plus or minus 5 seconds. The initial draining complete, the inspector holds the test measure at 10 to 15 degrees from vertical for 10 seconds, thus draining what liquid may remain. It is important not to shake the test measure during this final draining. To empty a bottom drain prover, the inspector begins by opening the drain valve beneath the prover. This allows the liquid in the prover to flow into the storage tank below. It is important that the inspector closely observe the flow of liquid through the sight glass under the drain valve. Once the main flow of liquid ceases, the inspector begins timing. For bottom drain 5 gallon provers, the drain time will be 30 seconds. The inspector can verify the proper drain time by looking at the drain time marked on the prover or on its laboratory calibration certificate. When the drain time has elapsed, the inspector closes the drain valve and the prover is now ready for the next test draft. Following specified drain procedures helps to ensure that the amount of liquid remaining in a prover or test measure is consistent from draft to draft and duplicates the conditions under which the standard was calibrated in the laboratory. After the final accuracy test is finished, the inspector performs an anti-drain test. With the dispenser in the off position, the inspector lifts the nozzle at least three feet above the level of the nozzle and depresses the trigger. If a small amount of product comes out of the nozzle and slows to a few drops, the anti-drain means in the dispenser is operational. But if there is a continuous trickle or flow, the anti-drain valve is likely malfunctioning and the anti-drain means in the dispenser is unacceptable. A gasoline dispenser is what we call a wet hose type device. The term wet hose refers to the fact that the dispenser is designed so that the discharge hose is full of liquid at all times. Consider what happens during a delivery. At the beginning of the delivery, the hose is full of liquid. But the liquid that's in the hose was actually metered during the previous delivery. When the current delivery begins, the product goes through the meter and displaces the liquid in the hose into the customer's tank. At the end of the current delivery, the product that is, remains in the hose was actually metered during the current delivery. But just as product that was metered during the previous delivery goes into the current customer's tank, the product that was metered during the current delivery will go into the next customer's tank. An anti-drain valve or other means helps to ensure that the discharge hose cannot be drained between deliveries. And this helps to ensure that subsequent customers are not getting charged for product that they didn't receive. This video has offered a short tutorial on proper procedures for testing the accuracy and performance of motor fuel dispensers. Handling such tests safely and efficiently is how weights and measures officials serve both the purchasing public and the commercial community. Their work assures marketplace equity, discourages unfair competition, and promotes consumer confidence.